Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of From the Root to the Fruit. I'm your host, Jay Smith. Uh, today's guest is uh, my little brother, for lack of a better moniker. Uh, and I mean that in the most affectionate way possible. Uh, I've known this dude for quite a quite a long time. Uh, I genuinely believe that that his story uh, and and just have, sitting down and having a conversation with him is going to be beneficial to everybody, uh, including myself. Uh, some of these things that I I that we're going to touch on today, I know or have known, and some of them absolutely have not. So, uh, what a treat! Sit back, enjoy yourself, uh, and please welcome to the show. Uh, Mr. Jarvis Barnett. <laughs> Jarvis, welcome to the show again, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. I know you got a, a ton of stuff happening and everything like that. Uh, glad, I, glad we could get something together. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, this is this is good. This is gonna be a fun one. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> already, Absolutely. already, ready, already. Absolutely. Uh, uh dude i've how long we've known each other for what 20 almost 20 years i really would need some pencil and paper and to, an uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> a ruler uh scientific calculator yeah i need all that but yeah it's been it's it's got to be 20 plus years yes sir yes sir so what um tell me a little bit about yourself what what are you currently doing what do you cur currently got going on Oh, shoot. Currently right now, man, I'm just um, working, you know, nine to five, uh, trying to get through the day like normal people. And um, music, music is a big part of my life right now. I produce music uh, for, I want to say, several different artists. And um, we're putting things together and um, working on different singles and albums and EPs and things like that. So I'm just producing music for a couple, like I said, a few different people. Uh, working nine to five, uh, trying to save money for a rainy day and uh, uh, trying to see exactly what we can do with this music business. We are taking this music a little serious, a little more serious than we did last year. I think last year it was kind of filling things out, trying to, you know, see where our strong areas were, see what we needed to work on. And I think it took us about a year to kind of figure out exactly what we needed to do. Now we're trying to put some plans in motion and take it very serious. So um, definitely uh, taking this music business very serious right now. Well, that's dope. And and, and I would be remiss and also a, a, a jerk if I didn't say thank you again for the 15th time, uh, sending uh, my oldest some some uh, beats and some information and pointing him in the right direction for his burgeoning uh, music career as well. So I Absolutely. definitely appreciate you. Absolutely. I was happy to help, man. When I found out he was, you know, trying to, you know, put his foot in that in that game, I was like, I got to help out. I got to be a part of that. So no question. I flooded his email. I know I, I didn't think you I, I thought you guys were going to get tired of me sending emails because I was just flooding his inbox with just every time I make something new, I would listen to old stuff. I was just just loading them up and sending it to him. But uh, yeah, I was happy to be a part of the process. Oh, no, that's Absolutely. dope. And and like I was telling him, like it, it's and for him, it's different, right? Like he he and I are a lot alike. Like he wants to do it himself, like a younger me. Like you, yeah. he wants to do it himself, like get away from me. Don't talk to me. I'm going to figure this out. Uh, right. but, but trying to to help him understand like the evolution that's happened with me is I keep really, really great people around me. So mm -hmm. then when I reach out or they reach out or vice versa, like we're coordinating uh, as a team, it's uh, what that old saying, if you want to go quick, uh, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go with others. So I'm, mm. I'm trying to get him to really, really wrap his mind around that and, mm. and, and get, get knee deep in it. But he's, he's got some, he's got some tasty stuff and, and I, we definitely appreciate you for that. Absolutely, man. When I heard, uh, I think it was one track you guys posted somewhere. You sent the oh yeah the the, the Mother's Day yeah the Mother's Day one. yeah man. I was at work. I was at my old job in the parking lot, like on a lunch break or something like that, or just a normal break. And uh, man, I was. I it took me. I want to say it, <laughs> it took me a good thirty minutes to get back into work. Man, I was I was in tears, man. 
like that like just like he, he was just it, it hit me man it hit me he did a great job on that oh to no say the least. no he if i could there's there's a couple right like we my kid i understand there's a, he's a little rough around the edges <laughs> so, so there's some there's some spaces he is clean like there's no no blade like did somebody cut this and some some parts is a little jagged which i i appreciate <laughs> yeah we are yeah. we're all a work in progress absolutely 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 well, well, tell, take me take me back to the beginning. Tell, let's tell the story of, of Jarvis. Here we go. Oh, man. So I grew up in the small town of Gastonia, North Carolina. And um, I would say everything started off fun at first. <laughs> <laughs> it's all tickles and chilling. <laughs> it's just like a relationship, you know with your significant other, uh, everything starts off just great. You know what I mean? You just, you're just happy to be a part of everything. You can't like, wait. Oh, I get to do this too. This yeah. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so, you know, and it was great, man. It was great. You know, I had a great childhood, um, as a kid, you know, we had, um, we, you know, we got to do a lot of things that kids don't, I don't want to say they don't do these days, but I think maybe take for granted or maybe not even a part of, but, you know, I actually got to play outside, you know, and, you know, there was where I grew up, there was a lot of uh, trees and forest and waterfalls and grass and hills. And so we experimented with all that swinging on vines, like gorillas, jumping in the waterfall, catching crawfish, making a ghetto grill, cook, trying to cook crawfish and little fish that we saw that we didn't even know if it was edible or not like we just did all kinds of crazy stuff as kids you know and we were bad you know we were we were some bad seeds i don't know if we were i won't i won't say we were bad we were just being kids man we had to right. learn what not to do doing it you know what right. I mean? <laughs> like, right, so, right. Like that, that trial and error where you like, Ooh, exactly. Oh, oh exactly. we can't do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. It was a lot of trial and error. That's the perfect, that's the perfect word for it. It was a lot of trial and error. It was, um, you know, and, um, definitely left some scars going through that trial and error too. So, um, but, um, you know, everything started off great, you know, perfect childhood doing, you know, kid things, playing with each other, playing with each other, fighting with our brothers, you know, arguing with our sisters, you know, and, um, and uh, as we started to get older, things started to change a little bit. I noticed um, it was about, it was kind of, I think being cool came into the process at that point, as we started to get maybe in my, in, in the teens, you know what I mean? I would say um, as a teenager, um, I guess being cool was cool you know what i mean that was the thing to do was being cool and i mean being when i say being cool i mean being cool was you know you know you had to have the right outfit on you had to have the right mm -hmm. shoes on you know what i mean you had to you had to wear your hat a certain way you know you had to talk a certain way you had to walk a certain way you had to be cool all the way around 100 percent. so otherwise you got pushed to the back burner nobody even really saw you nobody Nobody mentioned you, nobody brought your name up, you know, with, you know, if, you know, when there was a party or something or if people wanted to go hang out because you weren't cool. Right. So you had to be cool. You had to be cool. I think it started with that. And I think it was just trying to develop us as men, you know, um, I guess. And uh, so that was a thing for a while, trying to be cool, how you dress, how you talk, how you walk, you know, who you hung around, who they hung around. And um and then egos started to kick in, you know. Oh, that's um, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Here, here we go. This is the meat and potatoes right now. Yes, I'm with you. The egos, the egos started to kick in, and um, you know, and then it all, you know, as far as the guys, you know, it turned into a dick measuring contest. You know what I mean? And and that was uh, that got a little scary because. Um, friends that I grew up with, uh, you know, before when we were kids, you know, we were play with Tonka trucks and, you know, paddles and fire trucks. And, you know, we play cops and robbers and things like that, but that eventually turned into us playing with some different type of toys. That's you know right. what I mean? 
I'm with so, you. I'm uh, with you. So as we got older, as turning into young men, you know, uh, my friends started to get their hands on things, you know, that would uh, be frowned upon in society. You know, and I'm talking mm -hmm. about weapons. I'm talking about guns and knives and things like that. So um, it got crazy. It got scary. Well, let me ask you this. You and, and obviously a, a part of that is a part of I'm I'm trying to figure out when that's not going to be a part of the culture, but I feel like that's just part of the culture. Oh, right. Man, in, in yeah. certain areas that you go and in, in certain cities that you you go into, especially around the, the United States in, in particular, uh, young black men feeling as though whether it's uh, you're fighting over, sometimes it's turf. Sometimes it's to your point. I've, I've seen somebody get put in the hospital over getting their shoe stepped on. Like, it, yeah. it's it, like what I does that breed that that ego is what you're talking about right like or is is that do you feel like is that one of those deals where because of where you came from or because uh that's just the way that your uncle or your your dad or, or whomever like that's the way they carried themselves is is that what it is like i'm i'm trying to get to the root causes and obviously you and i maybe we don't know but it, what what do you think it is yeah i think it, i think it was exactly that I think it was what we saw, you know, as, as kids, we saw, um, you know, my friends, their older brothers, their older cousins and things like that. We saw what they were doing. They had the fancy cars, they were selling drugs, you know, they carry guns, they had all the girls, you know, and things like that. And we wanted that too, you know, and we were, we couldn't wait to get that, you know, and, and, you know, that's what it eventually came to as working towards that, you know, Right. And it was like, nobody even thought about, nobody was thinking about college. Nobody was thinking about school. Nobody was thinking about doing the right thing. You know, even if that was taught in the household, it was when we go outside, that's what mattered. When you went right. outside, that's what mattered. So we all started working towards that. You know, how can we, how can we get in the drug game? How can we start selling drugs? How can we, you know, where can we get some guns? How can I get a car? I don't even have a driver's license. I don't even know how to drive, but I know I need a car. I need some guns. I need some drugs. And then eventually some girls will start hanging around me and I'll be the man. I'll be right. the man. So, you know, that was a thing, you know, that, that happened a lot. So it was just, you know, that was, that was a big part of the ego thing though. I'm with you. What, uh, growing up in in your teens right like like when you you're you're transferring what what called you because obviously that's not a part of your life now so what 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 called you or pushed you towards a, another particular avenue oh wow so i think as a kid i started to i started to see some things that changed my perspective and made me realize this is not what I wanted. Um, one thing I, uh, I want to say, I saw a few of my friends murdered. Okay. And um, after that happened, you know, after, after it happened once or twice, you know, it was a shock, but then when it happened three, four, five, six, seven times, it was kind of a normal thing, you know, and to the point where I wasn't even crying anymore about it. It was kind of like, expected to happen at some point right which i thought eventually would happen to me the way i was the way my attitude was and um, i eventually did think that was going to happen to me but what changed my perspective was i think i want to say this is going to sound cheesy and corny but i want to say happiness um i realized i was i was more happy being another person stepping away from that life you know, where it was like, it was like stress was taken off of me where I didn't have to try to be cool. I didn't have to, you know, try to play a certain role or be a certain way. Um, that took a lot of stress out of my life. And I'm like, man, I feel like I can, I was like, well, you, I can be me. I can just be me and, <laughs> right. and, and, and have a good time and crack jokes and laugh and be quiet if I want to. That was the thing. Like it was, if you were too quiet, you were too shy, you know, kind of people kind of looked at you funny, you know? It was just like, it was just kind of molding you into trying to be a certain way for years and years. And it was just like a lot of stress, you know what I mean? Trying to, trying to be a certain way 
that's not you. So right. when I realized that I didn't have to do that and I could just be me and be happy, that was the first step of me stepping away from that life and and changing myself for the better. Nice. Nice. And that that I'm with you there, man, because there, there's got to be, especially after you've seen I, I know there for a fact and, and especially in, in every neighborhood, every black neighborhood around the nation, there's a poet, there is a uh, musician, there's an athlete, there's an activist, there's, a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all these things, but they, they got to your point, they get pushed into this, but like you, your, your uncle sold drugs and your uncle went to jail or, or whatever, like, well, you're, you you doing the same thing he was doing it and i'm i'm trying to figure out and and obviously this is a much longer conversation than we're going to be on here for but the at what point does somebody say well damn i'm telling him all the things in the wrong way if i maybe if i change the way i'm saying it like hey yes your uncle is in in prison for uh robbing a place or doing whatever he did but look at all these colleges that have availability in them where all you have to do is do your best work hard and you can have a different different outcome than he's had uh you know what that's funny you said that i think it was more i think it was the next generation so it was the older you know it was the old school guys it was the old heads that we call them you know who were in their 50s maybe 40s 50s and 60s it was these guys who had already done all the dumb shit that we had did you know that we were doing you know what i mean right. they already they already did all this shit so it was those guys and i think they saw something in me and they saw something in me and they used to you know they would often pull me to the side you know and, and talk to me like hey man you know you don't need to be running the streets with these guys you shouldn't be doing this you know you should be doing this you know they they were often trying to point me in the right direction so nice. and i and i would just you know fan them off like ah, uh, you know no you're right about, and, oh, and then you, you know got a mean? whole a whole nother problem right like if, if, if a, a teenager is not listening to to somebody like you don't know what you're talking about like you right you, you ain't got to worry about that no more right right and i used to uh there was a gentleman that was friends with my mom he was probably my mom's age um him and my mom were just friends they would come over to he would come over to the house they would have some wine sit there and talk you know and then I'd be, I would sit there and actually listen to their conversation sometime. You know what I mean? They'd just be talking about life and different things like that. And then, um, then he would go home. But sometimes he would come over or come to the neighborhood. And out of everybody in there, you know, out of everybody in the whole neighborhood, I mean, it was, I don't know, hundreds of us out there. You know, I mean, it was a big apartment complex. It was just a big hood. He would come to me and he would like, he would ask him like, you know, you want to take a ride with me, you know? And then, you know, I'm like, where are we going? I'm like, we're just going to drive around town and talk. You know what I mean? But that's what he would do. He would come and pick me up and just kind of, he was really trying to talk some sense to me, you know, telling me that he can also see something different in me. And, you know, he didn't want me going out like when he's like, you know, your friend, you know, such and such, you know, he got shot. He didn't make it. Your friend, he got shot. He's in the hospital. You know, this guy died, you know, he was like, where you want to go in life? You know, is this what you want? You know, and then I, I never even, uh, I guess I didn't think about it like that, but I do remember he set my ass straight one time I got in his car. I had this, <laughs> I swear I had this gun that somebody gave to me that I think somebody found like in the bottom of a river or something. I didn't even know if it shot or not, but I was like, if I got to beat somebody with it, I'll do that. But at that time, at that point in my life, I didn't have a functioning weapon, but I needed to have a gun. You know what I mean? I need to, right. I need like so, some type of representation. Representation um, of the, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I don't even remember, you know, I had to be in my teens, but um, man, I'm telling you, man, he chewed my ass out. Number one, for getting in his car with a gun. And number two, for having a gun. And number three, for having a shitty, raggly ass, non-functioning <laughs> gun. <laughs> He gave me shit about that. And um, he made me go dispose of it. And um, that was a change too, you know, that was that was a big change. And I'm like, so I don't have to carry a gun. You know, I don't need to do that. You know, because everybody had guns. Everybody, it was a normal thing. You know, it was like people with cigarettes in their pocket. You know, it was a normal thing. Yeah. Everybody had a gun. So, um, but um, 
he was a big part of it. But I think it was to answer your question. I really do think it was the older guys that that was the first start of people uh, not necessarily pointing me in the direction of college or anything like that, but pointing me in the direction of just stay the hell out of these streets, man. Stay away from these guys, man. You know, and these same guys they're telling me to stay away from their handshaking with them later on. You know what I mean? Cause they're all buddies and they're waving high to them, but the same guys, you know, they're being, you know, they're, they're waving high to and waving high in the streets. It's like, these are the guys they're telling me to stay away from. And mm-hmm. I used to think they were picking on me. I used to think they was hating on me, you know? And I'm like, why y'all, why me? Why are you telling me? Why don't you tell somebody else to, you know, right. why don't you tell him this guy is worse than me. This guy's getting in trouble all the time. Why don't you try to help him? He's the yeah. one that went to juvenile for six months. He went to juvenile hall for six months, got locked up. We ain't seen him. He looking crazy as hell. Why don't you tell him? to stay away from the streets and stay away from all this shit. Why me? You know, I, I didn't think I was that bad and I wasn't. And that's the thing. They didn't want to let me get out of fucking control. You know, they were trying to help me early. So um, I just didn't see it. You know, I, I, I really thought they was hating on me. I really thought that they were just picking on me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and, and that's kind of and, and just just in, in general, right? Like like men of color, black guys, whatever. But just men of color, like it, it's a like to that that punk like you're you why are you messing with me like right. that that now has right. to breed a response that I, right. in, instead of I, I got you one better because i i've learned in my in my older years not when i was younger <laughs> i am I'm, I'm not without sin on this podcast the uh <laughs> is there's a difference between reacting and responding i am yes. known very well for my reacting and not so well <laughs> for my responses so that that mm. that's the difference like like when people when you, when people come at you and you, and you feel some kind of way about it like i've always been and and been conditioned to react as opposed to mm. just respond just respond right, or right, don't right. respond whatever whatever right. whichever whatever but uh no it's it, it, it is that where you feel like you're picked on and especially in, in our culture this is before it got to be cool about being bullied and whatever and bullying's not cool that's not what i'm saying i'm saying right it, it, now it's being brought to the forefront so people are, are more readily uh to, to talk about it and they they refer to it as bullying but coming up like doing the dozens uh telling jokes like like ragging on somebody or, or pointing out their uh sh- one of their shortcomings or something that they're doing took the light off of you like, yeah. like, like you, you didn't have to worry about it because now everybody's looking over there and you get to kind of just float around and, and do your right. own thing. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, it was it was crazy because, um, you know, I, I got to a point where I did see, you know, some of my friends dabbling in the drug game. And, um, you know, I once I got to a certain age where I felt comfortable with it, I did dabble in it as well. And, um, you know, it was just a normal thing. It was just a normal thing to like now, obviously I know, and everybody knows that, you know, selling drugs and being, and doing all that stuff is horrible. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, quick, quick, no way to to quick way to know where to that quick way to know. Exactly. And I would say the only, the one lesson that my mom would tell me, I think my mom knew what I was doing, you know, and she would always just say simple, as simple as this, like, you know, you're going to end up in, you're going to end up jail in jail or dead, you know, and that's your fate, you know, and I'm, I'm going to let you choose it, you know? So for a while I was like, man, this, it was just, you know, I felt like that's what I had to do. I felt like that's what I had, even though I didn't have to do, I didn't have to sell drugs. I didn't have to sell drugs. I could get a job. I had a job. I was working. I only did it because that's what everybody else was doing. So, mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what got me out of that was um, something that got me out of uh, selling those drugs was um, the same man who used to tell me to stay away from the guys who are troublemakers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, So this gentleman, you know, the same man who used to tell me Hey, Hank, stop hanging out with these bad guys. You know, these guys are up to no good. You know, that guy, he was, uh, you know, he was on drugs himself. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, he wasn't perfect either. You know, even though he was trying to aim me in the right direction, he was not a perfect man. So, but he came to me and he said, you know, I, I thought he wanted some drugs, you know? So I was like, you know, is there something you want? You know, what you need, you know? And he said, I want everything. And I'm like, oh, you spending big money today. Okay, you want everything? <laughs> ah, right. Let's get it. Let's uh, get it. Set it off. Let's, let's get it. Okay, I'm clean. I'll be cleaned out after this. Cool. It's been a good week. So uh, he's like, no, I want everything. I want you to give it to me and I ain't giving you no money. <laughs> so I'm like that, it don't work like that. It don't work it's, like that. You, that is not how commerce know? works, sir. <laughs> it's not, it's not how that commerce works. Hey, do you, you realize where you are, you know, it don't work like that. So, um, but um, he gave me an ultimatum. He said, um, you give me, give me the stuff, you know, or I can go tell your mom, your grandmother, your uncles, your aunt, you know, I can tell everybody what you're doing out here, you know? And um, I was like, I can deal with my mom, but you bring a grandma into this, man. I mean, come oh, on, we, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. come on, you can't tell granny. Why you gonna tell mm -hmm. granny? Like, what, 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 come on, man. <laughs> like, why you gonna so, go there? <laughs> why you going there? Why you going there? So it's like, you gonna tell my grand, who does that? <laughs> who does that? Who says that? I'm going to tell your grandma you're going to sell drugs. So I'm like, she ain't even over here. She live on the other side of town. You know what I mean? So like, you're going to, I was like, man, this is crazy. But um, I was like, you're going to tell granny? He's like, and your aunt, your uncle, I'm going to tell everybody. So I made the decision. I He kind of robbed me, no gun. You know what I mean? It was just like all a verbal altercation. <laughs> you know? So yeah, no gun, no weapon, no knife. It was just, he was about six foot three. Uh, he didn't wear, he, he never wore a shirt. Um, uh, even when it was 32 degrees outside, he never had a shirt on. So, um, he was an intimidating man. And, um, I was like, shit, if you want to get high that bad, you know what I mean? I was like, that's cool. You know? So, uh, I gave him everything I had. And, um, I don't know that kind of, uh, when, when that happened, when I got cleaned out by him, I just kind of never went back after that. Not kind, I didn't. I didn't go back after that. And um, I don't know, I think that was, uh, that was the last straw for me, you know? And I just, I realized, I was like, I, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You, you know? know, I think it was, I took, I, I, you know, at that point, you know, like to say, I didn't take it as a loss, I took it as a lesson, you know? So I felt like he relieved some stress for me. I was like, now I don't have to stand out here till 11 12 o'clock at night dealing with these crackheads you know what i mean like you know he kind of took that ease you know took that pressure away from me you know so i was like i got money he didn't take my money i still got money in my pocket i don't have drugs but i don't have the stress of trying to sell these drugs and worrying about the police and worrying about getting robbed by somebody else or anything like that so like, and that's, that's just the way I looked at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody else probably would have got a gun and did some damage to him or, you know, hit him over the head with a club or something or robbed his house or something like that. Like the guys that I grew up with, like it wouldn't have worked out so good. So, you know, he, I felt like he could only do that with me and, and still be walking around the neighborhood because I kind of just let it go, you know? And I was like, man, am I being a pussy about it? You know, but, um, I just, I just, um, like I said, I took it as a lesson. I just never went back after that. And, um, you know, that was another key point of, that was the, you know, that was another step in the right direction, you know, and instead of going back into the streets and living that street life, that was another lesson that I learned to step away from that, from them telling me to step away from them, taking my drugs away from me, from the guy in the car telling me, get rid of the gun, made me dispose of it. You know, I'm like, why is everybody trying to make me into a saint? You know right. what I mean? Like, what is going on? I could not understand it as a kid growing up. I could not understand it. I was like, why does everybody want me to be so good? I was like, nobody's good. Nobody's <laughs> doing good around me. Especially that guy over there. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at him, them. especially him. These guys are not saints. These guys are these guys were bullies. You know what I mean? They were they were they were thugs. They were criminals. You know what I mean? Like nobody's doing. Why are you trying to make me to be the holy person? Like I'm gonna save everybody's life out here. You know what I mean? Like I'm just right. trying to get through the day and fit in. I don't have 
like it was it was crazy i didn't understand it it was insane but that was another turning point for me was um you know when that happened and uh I started to get older and then I realized, you know, that a nine to five, it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> and so it was cool though. In high school, I was actually working in high school, not at high school, during high school, I had a job, which was really cool because I could actually, um, you know, I had extra money in my pocket. I can come to, you know, if I want to come there, you know, come to the lunchroom or whatever, we at the cafeteria having lunch, you know, I'll buy a couple extra juices for a little chick, you know what I mean? Some girl I got a crush on. I'm like, oh, you want extra chocolate milk? I got you, baby. Come over here. Come over here and sit with me. I got you. <laughs> Give I her all you. the chocolate milk. Right. You want an extra slice of pizza? Throw some extra pepperonis on that pizza. Put that on my tab. Got That's, got on got That's on me. That's on me right there. <laughs> so that was, that was really cool. That was really cool. And then I, I realized... I was like, hey, man, this nine to five ain't so bad. You know, it's not so bad. So um, I did that for a while and uh, got through high school. And and uh, eventually, you know, was bouncing from job to job. And then that's right about the time I started working at uh, O'Charlie's, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Very <laughs> highly. Shout, shout out to the O. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to the O man. Shout oh, but yeah, so, Rob and and all those guys. Yeah, hit me, man. Rob, Tony, uh, man, what was that black dude's name with the beard? Uh, Terrence was that his name? Yeah, yep, yep, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. that is that gentleman's name. It is. Oh, it was. It wasn't God. what I was getting ready to call him outside his name. <laughs> oh my god uh, so yes. um uh he, he and i did not get along on any level <laughs> at all <laughs> oh my god so yeah so that was about the time that i was working at O'Charlie's, and um you know by that time i had quit everything i'm just living a straight life you know i had uh you know i think i was still living with my mom and uh, I had to be, what, 16, 17 years old, something like that. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I was busting tables, busting tables at O'Charlie's. And um, I remember when I first met my friend Eddie, Eddie Anderson, God rest his soul. Right, shout out Eddie, yeah. On the shout ones and Eddie. twos. Boy, he could play shout the piano. He could man, play the piano now. Man, this guy was... He was a musical genius, man. But that was, I remember when I met him and I, I used to always tell him up until the day before he died, man, I would always remind him. I'm like, man, when you first saw, when I first saw him at Old Charlie's, he was working there. When he, I remember he got a job there. Uh, the day I saw him, I was like, man, now this is me. This is my young, this is my young, immature mind, you know, okay. because it wasn't, uh, I don't know. I guess at that time it wasn't that many young, attractive black men there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. To say the least. So when I saw him, I was like, man, this motherfucker gonna come in here and try to take all the bitches. You know, I was like, I got <laughs> shit on lock in here. Okay. He gonna come in here and try to take all the bitches, try to take all the attention. I was mad at him the first I didn't even know him. I was already mad at him. I was mad at him as soon as I saw him. I was like, I hope they don't hire you. I hope they fire your ass. So uh, <laughs> I hope they don't hire you, and I hope they fire you. So, <laughs> so however that works. But um, man, when he and then when he started working there, man, me and him we just became the best of friends. Man, you know, it was it was it was it was a perfect friendship, man. Like he just, I realized he did. You know, he was into music. That was my start of getting into music, but. I was just rapping at the time, you know? Right. So everybody in my neighborhood, that was a thing I forgot to mention. Everybody in my neighborhood rapped. Everybody rapped. Everybody thought they were going to be a big time rapper. And yep. we'd do ciphers. And, you know, we we get up extra early to go to the bus stop in the morning just to have a rap cipher, you know, and pass it around, uh, you know, before the, before the school bus comes. So oh, nice. uh, we would do that. But um, 
so that was my that was my start of of, of music was with Eddie and um like you said he was he would you know I knew he could play the piano I knew he could play the piano and uh he actually played a few different I mean he had instruments that he would just that he had just kind of had around his house that he would never use he had trumpets guitars pianos keyboards harmonicas anything anything that made music he had it you know so nice. i'm like uh not anything but you know he he had a, you know a number of things to make uh you know just some music instruments that i didn't even think that he could play you know i never even seen a trumpet for or before in real life i'm like what but um he he would uh you know, tell me that he could, you know, he was into music. He was into making music and recording music. You know, I told him I could rap. So mm -hmm. I would come over to his place, man. We would put some tracks down. We would rap. We would sing. And, you know, he would teach me how to play things. He would play the piano. He would make beats, you know. And I remember when I first tried to make my first beat, it was so horrible, man. It's, it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. But I, he, he was teaching me how to make beats on the keyboard and the recording process and everything like that. So we were recording things. We were, um, I was rapping, I was writing lyrics. And then I couldn't wait to see Eddie every day after that. Once I realized that he was into the music and we could actually record music together. And, you know, this was a time killer for me. And, you know, it kept me away from the drama and the bullshit that was going on in my neighborhood. I would just leave go hang out with him. We do music and, you know, write lyrics. We do uh, like funny skits back in the day. That's when like skits were popular on CDs, right. you know what I mean? When you listen. So, um, but we were doing all this stuff, man. It was great. And um, we just, and it just, it just kept going from there, man. But we just kept elevating. We kept, um, you know, coming in contact with other people who were into music and producing and things like that. And uh, we were trying to make some moves. It was all fun though. We weren't taking it serious. It was just, you know, it was really just for fun. So, um, but uh, I feel like I'm, I'm blabbing, man. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh no, no. And, and well, this is, I think this is important. One of the reasons why is, is to, to the earlier reference, Eddie, Eddie passed away uh, I think yeah. a year, a year or two ago. Yeah. Uh, suddenly on his, his, he had been sick for for a time uh yeah. so i no, i got i got no sweat I, I i have a lot of respect for that dude yeah yeah man he uh i knew he was i mean he had the whole time i've been knowing him you know he was uh i think he was a type 2 diabetic mm -hmm. and uh man to be honest man like he just really wasn't taking care of himself like he should have been you know and um and I didn't help with it. You know what I mean? I did not help with it at all. You know, as far as like the, cause we were smoking cigarettes, we were drinking, mm. you know, and, you know, staying out late and just like, he was just not taking care of himself. He would take his medication, but like, he was just like, as far as like his health, like the things that he was doing to himself, you know, it's just, it just wasn't good. But yeah, man, it eventually took him down, man. It eventually took him down. And I think he knew it because right before he passed away, he moved back to North Carolina. Um, he moved back to North Carolina and, um, you know, started getting close with his family again, started getting close with his friends again. And it seems like as soon as he got settled and everybody knew he was back home and he got comfortable, it was like, man, he, he just passed away. Well, I think, what was he, 40? I think he's 40 years old. Yeah, not even, not even. Yeah. It's a, it's a quick crazy. ride now. It's for all the time that it takes. It's a quick ride. Man, I was I couldn't believe it, man. It didn't seem real. I saw a post on Facebook about it. A woman that he was in a relationship that he used to be in a relationship with uh, when we all lived in Florida together. Um, he uh, she kind of made a post like because uh, the lady. So he dated, he was uh, in a relationship with this lady. Her son actually passed away. Now, her son and me and Eddie were all good friends. Um, the son, he passed away. And then she made a post saying, you know, now these two can sing together in heaven and hang out together in heaven. I'm like, what do you mean? You know? And then she, you know, she broke the nose. That's how I found out she broke the news to me that uh, he had passed away. And um, I just, I couldn't believe it, man. 
I really couldn't believe it. It tore me up. But um, before all of that, um, you know, he got me, he really did get me into the music production and things like that and um, introduced me. He introduced me to music, man. And it was, it was great. I'm, I'm so grateful for that because it's, you know, it's my, you know, it's, it's what I love today, you know? And um, I think it was really, it's really because of him, I got into it. He taught me everything I know as far as like the production and learning, you know, I can't read music, but he was actually trying to teach me to read music, um, you know, timing, you know, pitch, you know, all these things. Like he, I just, I learned all these things from him and um, I'm just uh, happy that I'm, I'm grateful for the time I got to spend with them. Most definitely. For sure. For sure. And yeah. I, did, I didn't know him as well as you did, but I, I've, I was a part of those, some of those drinking <laughs> nights and not making the right choices. I, did, I didn't know his situation, uh, but I, I knew I wanted to drink. So that I was definitely in line for that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, man. We had some fun nights at O'Charlie's and uh i mean it was like we would get off work and like hang out in the bar you know what i mean and it was just things got a little crazy i remember when i turned 21 years old and um i came straight he was the first person i went straight to his house and it was like midnight you know <laughs> so it's like 11 59 i'm like banging on his door i'm like hey wake up i'm 21 let's go let's go drink come on and he's like he's got to be at work in the morning it's 12 o'clock at night and i'm looking like a crazy person banging on his door he wouldn't come to the door his window was open so i basically broke in his house <laughs> <laughs> so i broke in his you, house. you did what you had to do <laughs> i was like i'm not i'm not giving up like he i know he's in here I know he's in here. So I'm like, he's, he, he you know, he don't go anywhere this late. So he's, he's got to be home. So his window was open. So I broke in his house and uh, I went upstairs. He was sleeping in the bed. I turned the light on. I started beating him with pillows and stuff. Like I'm like, get up, man. I'm 21. Get up. What you doing? So uh, I got him up finally. And uh, we ended up going to O'Charlie's where we worked. And when I walked in, they had, it looked they already had something set up for me they had like like the whole bar was lined up with just it was like shot 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 beer shot beer beer shot just going all the way down the whole bar and they were like start from here and go all the way down love I'm it like, you I got the, this. none of these things are recommended for regular people no so absolutely yes. absolutely disclaimer don't try it <laughs> don't 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 attempt to try that ever so it's not, it's not good for you. And um, I got it. I didn't even, I don't even know if I made it maybe, you know, to the fifth or fifth or sixth drink down before I turned around and everything that was inside of me was outside of me on the floor. And um, I, uh, I remember them carrying me outside. I remember them carrying me out of the bar and they put me in the front seat of somebody's car and I passed out. And uh, that was how I turned 21. So uh, that lasted all of maybe about 20 minutes. <laughs> 21 minutes turning 20 at, at the age of 21. But um, that was crazy, dude. That was insane. But uh, yeah, Eddie was so Eddie was a Eddie was a part of that, and uh, Sean was a part of that. Shout out to Sean. Shout out and, Sean. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. And speaking of Sean. That was about the time when I met you and Sean. Yep. That was about the time when I met you guys. And man, you guys were, I mean, you guys were like, you guys were it, man. You know, it was just, even just being around you, you know, it was just like, I, I, I couldn't keep up with you guys, man. I couldn't keep up with you, man. It was just like the, you know, the, he was always saying like the, the craziest stuff, you know what I mean? And, and everybody, everybody wanted to be around you, you know, and everybody wanted to hang out with you. And everybody was wondering if you were worried and checking. They're like, Jay working today. Everybody's checking the schedule to see if you're working. And I was just, I would just watch from a distance, you know, like just kind of, you know, 
watching you guys and your moves that you made and how you guys talked and um, especially you though, but you were the ring leader, you know? So <laughs> you were definitely the ring leader, man. It was, it was crazy that um, I got to go through that whole process of, and I don't even know, I mean, you guys were there when Eddie was there, that was all around the same time. I guess maybe I was just, I think you guys, you were just like way ahead of me mentally. And I just wasn't even on oh, that I level. I don't know about all that. You give you give me way too much credit now. I, uh, <laughs> th this was a this was a time like right after I was I was out of the army. I was out of college, so this yeah. was like the prime time for for my stupidity or growth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, w now that I'm you know you're older and and you got some sense about you. You yeah. kind of understand some of the things you've gone through and the reasons you've done the things you have. Uh, I I know it's stupidity, but I'm going to call it growth. Uh, yeah, you, you get an opportunity to kind of see who you are, and that that to your your point earlier about being cool, it's always been cool for me to just be me, like not yeah. not necessarily for someone else's consumption, but I've I've always been the same. Like even now, old man, wife, kids, the whole bit. I. The, that same guy still pays rent in here he still lives here yeah. uh, <laughs> so it's 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 just learning how to make those demons dance as opposed to having them operate your entire functioning life absolutely man absolutely but you guys were just you know you guys are just like super popular you know what i mean in the restaurant and i just um you know, me, I'm not one to, you know, jump up in everybody's business. I just kind of stayed out the way. But you guys eventually, especially you, kind of like welcomed me into the circle. You know, we oh, yeah. were just kind of chatting back and forth here and there, kind of cracking jokes a little bit. And then, I don't know, I guess maybe you looked at me and was like, ah, that guy's all right. You know, he's, he's all right. You know, because you guys didn't let just anybody into your lives. You know, you guys you 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 crack you know you crack jokes with you know people from time to time here and there but you didn't let anybody personally into your life like that from what i remember oh, yeah, so that's fact still to, to this day yeah yeah <laughs> so and you know even if somebody you know and it's just it, it's crazy because even if somebody seemed to be you know we'll just say you know john you know john seemed to be a cool guy you know everybody liked him you know, it didn't matter. Like, you had to be a special type of person to get welcomed into Jay's life, male or female. Yep. You know, so, you know, it was, it was, I just didn't even think that I was like, man, I just didn't think that you would ever even say anything to me. You know what I mean? Just because of coming from where I come from and how I grew up and my thought process. But, um, yeah, man, we eventually started talking and hanging out and, uh, man, things got crazy after that. <laughs> extremely, extremely good <laughs> gracious. Extremely. Yeah. Uh, you, you ended up being, becoming one our roommate. Uh, we, we all yeah. lived together at, and, uh, we had a buy, there was a by uh, walking distance from our apartment. Yeah. And you, uh, we, we get home from work or whatever, head over to the Bilo, uh, grab some steaks. I cook up something or you cook up something. And, yep. and th this, <laughs> there's always the same lady asking us if, if we're getting in trouble or what we're doing <laughs> or where we're going. And, and it's, I mean, it's obviously somebody's grandmother or whatever, but I, I, we, we called her the Crip Keeper because she, she was, uh, it seemed like she was 200, like it was Harriet Tubman's ghost or something. Like she was 275 years old. Uh, shout out to, to the Bilo up there. The, um, oh it was God. just, it was cool though, but you know what I'm saying? Like we, we didn't mock her or whatever in front of her. We were all respectful, no, no. always respectful, uh, but, it, but we were just trying to figure out like this was like at 12 o'clock at night, like who's, why did they sit have you working here now like you that's oh you understand. know what i even think about that because we would take random trips to bilo at 11 30 at night to get ribeye steaks you know some sides a bottle of hennessy you know <laughs> like, we're trying to and then she was always there always. she was always there and just and and 
you know, she'd be like, I was wondering if y'all was going to come, you know what I mean? She'd be kind of expecting us, you know, right. and like we would see her. Way. Don't, don't lock the door. They don't, they coming. Like, <laughs> they coming. They coming. Y'all got the steaks? Y'all got the steaks out? Make okay, sure you cool. got the best stuff you got, because they coming. <laughs> the crazy. boys been working hard today. They coming. So, yep. uh, so, yeah, man, we used to go up there, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. She was always there. I don't know how we we started calling her the crib keeper like no disrespect to her but she seemed like she was like 193 i'm not she, i swear <laughs> she was I'm, like i am a lot of things in this life i am not a liar she <laughs> looked like she was 150 years old if she was a day <laughs> and I, I and and it's not that she can't work or whatever it's not any of that right i i was just trying to figure out like i know it's almost midnight right. i'm tired why right. are you here right with me that was right. that was always the and place the ener- I was coming from. Her energy, her energy that she oh, had. She was, she was ready, ready. Right. <laughs> you know, she see us coming. She all she stopped what she doing. You know, she might be dusting the, you know, the, the registers and things like that. She see us coming. She's like, oh, oh, there they go. Okay. There they go. She make there her they way go. Over. That's their there one. They go. There they go. <laughs> <laughs> so we would she would uh you know, she would head on over to the registers. And I remember, I don't know if you remember this. <laughs> but, so when we lived together and we were roommates, mm-hmm. our, uh, our, uh, the numbers on our door, the address was 329. Three two, yeah, 329. Yeah. 329. So I don't know, man, we had a, you know, we had many great weeks, you know, we had many great days, but I think we were just having another great day that day. We went up there to get some steaks and some Hennessy like we always did. And uh, we had a, I think that night we had a kind of like an extra, we we talked to her for a little bit. You know, we had a little conversation right. with the lady sitting there joking around with her and things like that. And she was like, I just remember her saying something like, yeah, man, you got to do what you got to do. You know, that's how I go, <laughs> you know. And then when she was handing us the change, she was giving you money back. The money, the change happened to be $3.29. And she was, when she said, because that was a thing, we would always say three twenty nine dollars because that was our address. That was like our set. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'd be like, that's some three twenty nine dollars shit. You know what I mean? That was our set. That was what we, rep- we represented, three twenty nine. dollars People knew that. So that night, man, when she gave your change back, and she said, she was like, that's what that's what you got to do. That's how shit be. That's how it goes sometimes. Okay. 329. <laughs> she gave your money back and said 329. Bro, I fucking ran out of the store. That shit was just amazing, man. Because we 329 was so important to us. We used to say that shit all the time. Yes, sir. We just quoted. I wanted to get a 329 tattoo. You don't even know. That shit was life. <laughs> 329 was life. I was right on my forehead. 329. Going across whichever way. Right to left, left to right. Fuck it. Whichever way you read, it was going to be there for you. So when she gave you a change back and said 329, man, I was just, I, I, I couldn't believe it, man. I think you just, I think you just kind of just like, you just like, I remember you just kind of hunched over, like, like you were shot in the stomach or something. You would just like, it just, it was, you dropped down on your knee. I was running out the store. I come back in, you're still on the floor over there. She looking over the register, like what's wrong with the boy, man. That night was so crazy, man. I remember that night. Oh, I remember man. that night when she gave you that she uh when she gave you that money back and said 329. That was such a good night. We went home, cooked the steaks. I don't know if you remember this, but we drank like a whole bottle of Hennessy. <laughs> oh no, I do. I do. <laughs> we drank a whole bottle of Hennessy and ended up passing out in the floor in the living room. In the room. floor. Cause and the reason I remember that is because <laughs> I was like, why am I still down here? <laughs> I I meant to go upstairs. Why am I still down here? And, you know, and then I could I could smell the I've I haven't had Hennessy since. On my mother's eyes, I swear. I've I've not had a sip. I don't even like people breathing on me when they drink it <laughs> to this day. That sh- man, that shit ruined me for Hennessy. The bottle. What happened to the people that are listening and watching? And I'm laying there. I'm like, why do I still smell it? The bottle's like cockeyed in my face. The bottle, the way we were laying opposite sides from each other, like our heads were facing each other. Like you were one direction, I was the other direction. And the bottle was in the middle of us. (laughs) 
empty laying on its side with the cap off all you could smell was fucking Hennessy all night trying to sleep breathing that shit it's coming out of your breath it's in your lungs it's in your stomach and there's a fucking and the ceiling fan is fucking just mixing it around in the air and we're just laying there trying to fucking sleep and rest and all you breathing in is fucking Hennessy fuel it's Hennessy it's Hennessy <laughs> That's all it is. It's Hennessy. Just Hennessy. Every breath you take, Hennessy going to be there for you. Golly. It was insane, man. And I'm like, I'm gagging in my sleep, man. I'm trying to fucking not throw up in my sleep. And I, and I don't know why. We were so fucked up. We couldn't know. Neither one of us could reach our arms up and just, even if we just push the bottle just out. push of, it under the couch. Just, just push, push it, it somewhere. Push it in the nope. kitchen, under the couch, somewhere. We just get it done. We just lay, <laughs> couldn't do it. We just laid there and just dealt with it. And I was thinking about, I remember I was thinking about all kinds of things. I was like, man, I bet Jay has got some Gatorade in there. You were fucking, you and Gatorade. You remember that shit? I should, I, I should have stock in that. You know what's funny? Even, uh, <laughs> what is a while? This was, this was a, a while after that, obviously. But the, um, when I met my wife, she, she came to visit me while I was working at, uh, I was bartending, uh, stool pigeons. It's no longer there. Shout out stoolies. Uh, out. I was working there. She was like, well, what, what can I bring you? And I a Gatorade and a Snickers. That was it. That was, <laughs> that's all I need. Let's go. I, I can survive for days. Give me a Gatorade and a Snickers. We can go to work, man. You and fucking Gatorade, man. You were, it was like, I was like, this shit gives him like superpowers or something, man. Like you were obsessed with fucking Gatorade, man. We was going you by the case. By the case, I remember you used to have to fucking go to different stores because they was always fucking out of it because you was fucking, or if they didn't have the kind, you know, you're like, nah, today I want, you know, I want orange. I want orange. Today, today, you know what I mean? Orange and lime. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> or, orange and lemon lime or get get out of my face. I'll slap you. Get out of my face. You're, you're, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You bought fruit punch? You clearly don't yeah. want us to be friends no more. You bought fruit punch? Okay. Okay. Stay right here. Keep that fruit punch in your hand, but stay right here while you, while you oh, use it. Oh, my God. I'm like, Jay, what you up to today? Oh, man, take a little road trip. You know, going to the store. Been on the road about 45 minutes. <laughs> no, this other store, they got cases. They got cases. They, Gator. they got they cases. They called me up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, you driving fucking three hours for Gatorade? It was Gatorade was life, man. It was That's life. Whole, that was the whole beat. That was the whole beat. Well, tell me, uh, tell me about what brought you to Arizona. I know that's where you live now. What uh what what put you in Arizona? Oh man. So what put me in Arizona? So I'll give you a quick background. So I went from I went from North Carolina to Florida. Now I was with Eddie and fester shout out to fester and uh <laughs> i haven't heard that name in quite some shout out fester i, I, shout I, I out. haven't heard heard that name in quite some time shout out to DJ, dj fester man so here's what happened i was i was working at o charlie's and uh oh man i just thought about some shit that i probably shouldn't talk about but um <laughs> so I was working at Ocho. I just thought about something that was crazy. But so I was working at O Charlie's and um Fester is from Florida. So Fester was telling me, like, hey, me and Eddie are moving to Florida. And I'm like, when? And he's like, tomorrow. I'm like, tomorrow? He's like, yeah, you want to go with this? I turn around and look and see why. Well, sure, let's do it. And, and for those of you that, that obviously like, oh, wow, you guys make decisions like that. I did the same thing. Like yeah. that was, I did the exact same thing, but it was, it was to, to go back to Raleigh. Cause I'd already gone to college there or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yep. I'm out. Yeah. I'm gone. I'm out. That's how it was, you know? And it, you know, you, you, you I don't know. I think my environment, the way I was raised, the way I came up the people I was around, you kind of just made decisions you know, and it just kind of, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what we were going into because we would figure it out. It yes. didn't matter where we were. It didn't matter. So like, you know, a lot of people like, I wouldn't just up and move to a different state out of nowhere. I I, I would, I would, I would do that because I yep. know wherever I am, I'm going to be okay. 
I'll figure yeah. it out. You know, I'm, there may be some struggle, you know, there's going to be some struggle, but it's a part of the process and um, everything's going to be fine. So yeah, I made a decision that night, you know, um, I told, uh, you know, they told me they were moving to Florida the next day. That's a, that's a short notice. But I, I went to my mom and I said, mom, I'm moving to Florida tomorrow. And I told my brother and they didn't believe me. And um, I, I was gone, you know, and, but the plan was really the reason I went to Florida is because that the U the U-Haul that Fester rented was a mm -hmm. stick shift. It was a stick shift U-Haul. Nobody could drive a stick. Eddie couldn't drive a stick. Fester couldn't drive a stick. Fester told me if I come down to Florida, I could stay down there. Or if I wanted to leave, he would make sure I got away back to North Carolina. He was like, but if I could at least drive them down to Florida. Mm -hmm. So I drove everybody down to Florida. We got down there and I was like, I'm not leaving. I saw the beach. I saw the women. I saw the weather. And that was all, that was it. And, you know, you don't oh, need much yeah, more. He's like, that's a wrap. And and I came uh, after you got settled in. I came to visit you. Like I I drove oh, I drove man. down. Uh, I got off I got off <laughs> I got off work because I was I was bartending in in Raleigh and I got off work. It was like three in the morning, and you were like, "Are you gonna leave?" Yeah, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> oh my god, man! We have been going back and forth. You were like, "Yeah, man, I'm a, I'm gonna come down in Florida and visit you." You know, people tell you they're gonna come and visit you. They oh, yeah. plan for it. You know, they you know six months from now, maybe next year they'll try to get to it. You know, but uh, you were like, "No, I, I, I'm coming down there." I'm you know, I'm like, "When?" You're like, mm, "Maybe like two days, I'll be down there." You know, and I'm like, "You serious?" Yeah, I'm on the way. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I think. And you know, for some reason, I don't think I really, I still didn't believe you. Like it didn't, it didn't settle in, you know what I mean? And I was just, I just went on about my day and I was like, eh, if he, if he comes great. I didn't plan for it though. I really didn't plan for it. And I was like, if he comes, you know, we'll move things around. But, and then I was sitting at home one day, just sitting on the couch and I got a knock at the door and it was you with your bags. <laughs> Let's set it off. What are we doing? Where are we going? I'm here. I'm, You're I'm like, here. I'm here. Let's go. I'm just, I couldn't believe it. You walked in, dropped your bags. I'm just walking. You walked by me. I'm just like, he's really here. This is crazy. He's here. Oh, my God. We tore the beach up. I don't know if you remember that shit, but. I, I remember falling in the street. I do remember that. <laughs> I do remember that vividly. I got the oh guy, people honk, beeping the horn or whatever. I, I, I had one too many. Uh, and for you young people, uh, do not drink into intoxication uh, in moderation <laughs> always. Uh, but <laughs> right. uh, for me, I, we, I, we were walking down to the little uh, strip right there on right by yeah. the beach. And, and I had one too many cocktails and just went bloop, bloop, right down, right in the street. It was actually Grey Goose. Uh, I remember we... We drink, so, you know, the, you know, at the bars, they keep the big tall bottles of liquor, mm -hmm. you know, the big bottles. We went through that. And then you told them to go bring another bottle. And I remember, I think it was something like they didn't have anymore. And you, I don't know if you bribed them, uh, scared them. I'm not sure how it happened. I, it's a, probably a combination of, of all those just genuinely <laughs> mixed together. This, uh, I haven't well, I, always been a husband and a father. <laughs> somehow, somehow you had the bartender because on the beach, there's, you know, there's just bars just lined up. Somehow you got the bartender to go to, I think she went down to the next bar. The next bar. Yep. And got a bottle of Grey Goose because that's what you wanted. Because that's what all we had been drinking was yeah. shots of Grey Goose and then whatever you want to mix with Grey Goose. What's that stuff over there? What's that? Orange juice, lemonade, and tea. Mix it. Okay, yeah. Put some gray goose. Yeah, in give me get me. that too. Yep. <laughs> so she actually, she and I remember her saying something like, "We don't do this. You know, <laughs> we don't, we don't do these kind of things. We don't just go get liquor from other companies. You know, because it's illegal. First of all, like <laughs> it, it's illegal. The <laughs> she sure is that she was like, uh, yeah, I don't think I can do this, but do you know you can't do it? And she was like, I, I don't know. I don't know that I can't do it. I'm like, so what an opportunity 
I'm not going to tell anybody. Are you going to tell anybody? Well, now it's subsequently like 17 years later, we can tell whoever we want, but yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so I'll be damned. She came back with some more great goose and we, Lord knows we didn't need any more fucking Did great not goose. need any more drinks. We didn't need any more. We were fine. We were good and tight. We were good. So, uh, we wanted to keep the party going. So she was like, fuck it. She came back with the with the Grey Goose. We kept drinking. And then, like, yeah, I remember you ended up in the street and the traffic was driving around you. And, and then I was sitting, were... and, and now it's, I understand I have kids of my own. It's called crisscross applesauce. But at the time, I just sat Indian style in the middle of the street and it was <laughs> waving at the people that was trying to beep at me to get the hell out of the street. I mean, oh my God. Hey, what are you, you going to do? Right? What are you, <laughs> you going to do? And then my, I'm, I'm like 130 pounds at that time. I'm trying to pick your ass up and I'm like pulling on you and people are looking at us crazy. And I'm like, oh, shit, the police are going to come. But you're like, they going to do shit. You know, and, I'm just like, <laughs> and you're like, I'm a vis- I'm, you're like, I'm visiting here. You know what I mean? I'm spending money. I'm visiting like everybody just needs to chill the fuck out. I'm like, Jay, don't work like that, man. You're in the street. And you're like, everybody just need to chill the fuck out. Everybody need to cool the fuck out. And it was just, you were trying to calm people down because they were angry at you because you were blocking traffic. And you were, I think you were like guiding traffic, like sitting on the well, ground. Well, yeah, I'm, I I'm like, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to, because you made me feel bad. Like, I, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Like, but you, <laughs> you, you, you like, my, you're my brother for real. I'm like, I'm not, nah, I'm not going to embarrass him out here. Let me, you know what? I can direct traffic. No problem. Let me, I'll be of use. Come on. Come on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. You can be, yep. How you doing? Beep, beep. Oh my God. It's no problem. And you know what's crazy? Nobody called the police. No cops came. No emergency. No volunteers. Nothing. Like nobody came. Everybody just drove around you. And that just happened for God knows how long until you until you was ready to get up again until i, I could actually until i could actually stand up by myself stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh until my I could god actually stand up by myself but that, that's what i mean and i i've said it uh on a couple of a couple of episodes just talking to the fellas and everything like that like i've always kind of lived this way where yeah. and and obviously i know where the line is i'm not completely and totally irresponsible but i feel like it'll just work out like right, as, right. as long as as long as you approach me with respect or whatever like i'm just this that was the time in my life where i i was at the peak of being screwed screwed up yeah and i i didn't yeah. know i didn't know how to self regulate that so right when i was enjoying myself and and i i felt comfortable and confident and safe and i'm hanging out with you and and so forth so it was okay well, we're not hurting anybody I, I had a couple of few libations. It felt good. I'm, we're having a good time. But as long as nobody gets disrespectful, I, we're, I'm oh, just going to direct man. traffic and get out of the street. No problem. <laughs> it was it was crazy. And um, there's a helicopter landing behind me. That's so weird. So uh, anyway, but so moving on, you know, we had a great time. We had a great time in Florida. And uh, you went back to your destination and I carried on with my life. And then I ended up meeting a girl. So I met a girl in Florida on the beach and um, it was kind of love at first sight, you know? Um, And uh, she was actually from Phoenix. She was from Phoenix. So we started dating and uh, we dated for years and uh, we actually, we had a little, she had a place kind of down on the beach and uh, I moved in with her and uh, it was great. It was beautiful. We had some great times partying all the time, but then we both, it came to a point where we both kind of got tired of it because we were, <clears throat> and I tell everybody this, you know, people are like, you lived in Florida, you live by the beach. Like, why would you leave? Why would you leave that? You know? And I'm like, you know, people, you get tired of things, man. Like nothing lasts forever. Like I just, I honestly got tired of going to the beach. I got tired of the traffic. I was tired of the crowds. I was tired of the alcohol. I was tired of all the people. I just got, I just wanted to just, I just wanted something different. So 
we she did too you know we 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 that was great that was a great time we we partied like rock stars on the beach you know and just you know with friends and it was great but we wanted to change so she has family in california she's like hey i got family in california we can go to california get jobs figure it out you know let's we can get away from here you know i had never even <clears throat> The farthest west I had ever been was West Gastonia, where I'm from. <laughs> so I hadn't been anywhere west before. So um, she said, hey, we can go to California. I got family out there. I'm like, At the, you know, this is another example. I'm like, cool, let's do it. You know, we saved money and uh, packed up everything. And I remember I went and saw Eddie before I left and I told him I was leaving. And then he was just like in shock. You know, he couldn't believe it. But I was like, hey, man, I'm leaving. I'm going to keep in contact with you. And I'll let you know when I get to where I'm going. But I am leaving. So um, me and her ended up going to California. That was crazy. That was crazy. I never, like I said, never been to the West Coast before. Where we lived, it was absolutely beautiful. Still is beautiful. Uh, black sand beaches. It was way north. I think we were north of San Francisco. So we were way up there. But um, <clears throat> so we lived out in California for a while. And uh, that was great beautiful and then um it came to a point where we wanted another change in our lives you know where we wanted to because where, where we lived it was kind of off the grid you kind of had to drive into town to get a cell phone signal to go to the grocery store and that was kind of like an you know an hour's drive sometimes hour and a half or something like that so that got old really quick Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we decided that we wanted to do something different, like go to school and be around normal society, you know, with traffic and buildings, you know, <laughs> just the normal society that we live in today. We just wanted something normal. Um, that secluded life was great for a while, but, you know, we want to change. So she's like, hey, I got family in Arizona. You know, um, we can go out there to schools. There's plenty of places to work. You know, there's apartments, there's houses. So another decision, hey, let's do it and figure it out, you know? And I, so, I, I, unless, uh, I think that's the way to live. Like not for nothing. Yeah. Like I, I, don't, I obviously don't, don't do that now, but I right, think that, right, right. that that's, that's what got me here. Like, that's the same yeah. thing. Like, well, what, what do you think? Okay, well, let's do it. Yeah. Saying, saying yes has gotten me. Saying yes. Yeah, exactly. That's the key. That's the key. A lot of people are afraid of change. Um, I think it's change. People get in their comfort zone and they're like, no, everything's good right now. Everything's fine. Why would I, why would I screw this up? Everything, you know, we were in great positions. Every, every time I made a split the second split decision uh, to move somewhere, everything's fine. Everything. Oh, it nothing... they're, they're more, more than right. Like, <laughs> right. Right. We, we, everything's we, were, great. we were getting it everything's great you know i looked at it as an another opportunity for something else you know for another great experience in life i really did so you know at so far my previous moves all my moves were great i never moved somewhere and it was a bad decision like god i wish i never would have come here you know every move right. i made was ended up being great so she said hey let's let's go to arizona and do this you know and and just live another life you know so that's what we did we uh came out to arizona and um, we started on the process exactly what we wanted to do. I got enrolled in school just like I wanted to. That was my main thing. I wanted to go to school, um, continue my education. I wanted to uh, pick, I wanted to choose a, uh, get a career in something. I wasn't sure what that was going to be, but I knew I wanted a career in something. I wanted to do something, you know, um, and I wanted it to mean something. I wanted to, I wanted to help people. So um, we got down to Arizona and uh, I actually got enrolled in college and um, we got jobs and, you know, everything was great. I, um, I finished school, graduated and uh, got the job that I was looking for. And then uh, so we're in Arizona living and then she decided that she didn't want to live here anymore. Uh, she wanted to go back to her old life in California, which was a great life. So at that time, I was like, I just finished school. I just got a new job. 
you know, um, I just got a new place, you know, at that time, I just couldn't, I didn't want to make that decision again to pick up and leave when I just got started building something, you know, I just started building something. I'm not going to tear it down. You know, if I'm, if something's already complete and I'm at the top already, yeah, let's do something different. Let's swipe it and start over. But I just started building this. So I want to see what I can do with it. So I chose to stay. She chose to leave. We peacefully decided to part ways. There was no hard feelings at all. So that's, that's what happened. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I've obviously seen a number of your relationships kind of play out. Uh, yeah. But, and that's how most of them go. But I am, I'm like, wait, what? What? Did, what? I, I tell you that too. Like what? Wait, what? So ain't nobody, ain't nobody get threatened. Nothing, nothing happened here. <laughs> nothing went down here. Okay. So she just, so she hugged you and, you know, just, just left. And that was, she yeah. didn't circle the block and then come burn the house down. None of that. Okay. Well, that's new. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, at the time she was the love of my life, you know, and that was hard. That was hard, but I knew, you know, you know, these, th these type of things are going to happen. You know, I, I just, you know, these are the type of, these things happen. So I just made a decision to just deal with it. And like I said, we peacefully, we peacefully just parted away, shook hands, hugged. And um, we're still great friends today. You know, we check in with each other every few months or so. Nope. And uh, you're check better, in with you're, each other. You're a better man than me. And I tell you that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no i um yeah man if it if, if something can be resolved peacefully man i'm all about that man i'm all about that i me i don't... too i gotta kick some stuff over first though i gotta make yeah. sure that something <laughs> is, is that on fire did i like that i don't know <laughs> but i just need to, we can be peaceful after i i gotta make sure i won too then we peace then all the peace stuff <laughs> <laughs> make sure you won <laughs> but um yeah, man, we're still great friends today, and um, yeah, it's it's great. But yeah, she kind of um, it sucked, you know, because I kind of I felt like I was kind of dumped out here with like no family, no friends, right. because she was all she was all I had coming out here, you know, she was all I had. So I just um, I dealt with it. She went her way, and I kept doing what I was supposed to do on my end. You know, I kept working and kept working towards my career, and. Um, provide it for myself, put a roof over my own head and got my own transportation, my own job and just took care of myself and just started to meet new people. And then my life just got settled out here in Arizona. And that's pretty much how I got out here. I love it. The, uh, <laughs> I, I think one of, I think one of the things that kind of gets lost and, and you and I've really shared, share this among other things, but, but we really share this trait where, I, I come from the country and, and nothing more than love and, and people caring about you. Uh, yeah. So I have a, I, I know what having nothing feels like. So yeah. everything else is a bonus. Everything else yeah. is a benefit. So if I have to start over, OK, uh, right. OK, I get, I get all right. the skills and the tools that I've learned so far. Right. Yeah. OK. I, right. I have no problem starting fresh, starting over. So I, I feel like we share that. And, and it makes it Absolutely. exponentially simpler to say yes. Well, oh, you're going to drop me off in, in the jungle or the forest or whatever. Uh, I get all my stuff, right? Yep. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah. I will figure it out, you know? And I mean, I just, I, yeah, I've been just living that way my whole life. Like I can, I can be anywhere and I'll, I'll just, I, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, whatever I have to do. And it's always been that way. And just not, like you said, just not being, being afraid to say yes, not being afraid of change. And um, I actually welcome the challenge. I love the challenge. I want, because I want to see if I can do it. You know what I mean? I want to put myself yeah. to the test. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm like, you. oh, is this something that's, is this something that's difficult that most people wouldn't do? People would turn away from this in a heartbeat. I want to do that. I want to do that. Bring, Bring it. it on. Bring it. Bring it. And I'm going to be the best at it, you know? So, you know, I did it three, four, five times. You know what I mean? I, I kept doing it. And, and I think that that really, you know, molded me to who I am today. And I'm, I'm just happy that I did that. I'm really happy I did that because I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. I, I would not be here if I, from that time, 
from back in North Carolina if I wouldn't have started that at that time just to say yes when and, and where I'm from it's a small town uh you know high crime crime rate everybody knows everybody um it's a it's 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 a big place but at the same time it's very small if that makes mm -hmm. sense um and it's one of those places where everybody's like um i was born here i'm gonna die here right you know nobody leaves where i'm from like i know there are some people that made it out and the people most of the people that left they went to prison and the other people that left they died right so <laughs> that was their way of leaving but I do know a, a few other people that maybe had family in other states and that's how they got out. But like a lot of people didn't make it out where I'm from. They kind of just got stuck there. You know, I yeah. really, they really just got stuck. And, and that's, that's one of the challenges I feel like I, I heard when I was, um, good grief, when I was a, like a sophomore in high school, I uh, mm -hmm. uh, quote that, that most people, just people in general, uh, live are born and die in the same 10, 10 square miles. Mm, and as soon yes. as I and as soon as I heard that, I never wanted to do that. So that was always the thing I you know in the back of my mind like, oh okay, like I we, we live in Washington proper. So I'm like, wait, yep, go that way. Yep, I'm not I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to die right. here. Like that that's always right. been been a thing on on my sheet too. Right. Yeah, that was my thing. I just, um, I think I've always loved traveling. My mom used to take us different places, you know, try to get us out of the city and, and, and let us see some country life. And I think I was always addicted to that. And then when I, when I, as I got older, I would meet friends that lived in places like Hendersonville and Fayetteville and Greensboro and all these places around North Carolina. I was always jumping at the chance to visit those locations. And I was always excited to visit when other people, it was just a car ride and they were just going somewhere else. I was always super excited um, to make those visits. But um, something I forgot to mention, when I made that Florida move, when I went from North Carolina to Florida, a lot of people don't know this about me, which I have told some people, but um, I did have a nine to five job, but I didn't have all the money in the world. And I was actually almost broke waiting for a paycheck to come in from O Charlie's skipping back. I left when I left North Carolina to go down to Florida, I had $20 in my pocket to my name, 20 bucks. And I mm -hmm. used that 20 bucks. I used that 20 bucks, most of it anyway, to like buy chips and sodas and drinks and stuff like that on the way down to North Carolina. And um, or I'm sorry, on the way down to Florida. And uh, once I got down there, um, I, I think I struggled for a little bit, but I eventually got my uh, last like couple paychecks from Mo Charlie. So I then I was able to get money again, but then I got a nine to five. We had a job set up down there in Florida, but I still got, that job wasn't gonna fall through for a couple months. So I actually got another nine to five job until that time um, was to come where we started that new job. But man, so that was a, man, that was, I remember that two, three weeks span of like literally having like nothing, like no money. We, we moved down to Florida. We got, we living in this beautiful three, four bedroom condo on the water. Oh, it was nice. And like, oh, all of us, nice. none, none of us, had, yeah, yeah. You remember, yeah. None of us had money, like moving down there. Like, not like that. Like we had some money maybe to get started with some things and buy a couple meals in there, but we didn't. Like there, nobody had like, you know, nobody had hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in their bank account. Nobody, nobody had that. So it was a struggle. Then I asked myself like, oh shit, like, what am I doing? What am yeah. I doing? And I was like, can I make this? Can I survive this? Of course I can. Of course I can. And I was like, I did everything. Cause my mom always told me when I left, she would say, you know, when you, when you're ready to come back, you know, to say the word, you know, the door be open for you. And that was a challenge for me. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to go back. I'm going to figure it out. And I want her to say, man, you didn't come back. 
You know, I want her. I right. want her to say that. Like, man, you that, didn't, that's you didn't a, have that's to a come point back. of pride, right? Yeah, that's a, that's right. a point of pride that that I can't. Right. I went out here and I made basically crap into Crisco, and and right. we got we got it going. <laughs> like, I, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. That. So that's what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to be able to call her and be like, oh yeah, it's been five years now, man. I still didn't have to come back, mom. You know what I mean? Like it was it was kind of like bragging rights, you know. So uh, and I still I I never. I mean, I went back to visit. You know, that was about it. <laughs> and do but, you um, and, and and I know for me, like going back home when I and when I do go back home, like there there's like a, a small fear going back home. Like it yeah. like an anxiety almost. Like yeah. Ugh, like I, I yeah. feel out of place. I feel like I'm not the same person I left at, and I'm not. But right. like you 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 start to feel that like it's oh, okay. Well the things that I do in my, my daily life, whether it's computers or or uh my career or whatever like i mm. i'm like oh you guys don't just do this like you, you you don't just order your your groceries like you don't what do you mean right like right what, right where do you where do you go to do this or that oh we don't do that wait what like it, you you i don't know this is I, f- I feel strange i feel like a stranger in a, in a in a land that i'm supposed to know that i everything looks similar but it ain't it ain't the same yeah man and i i you know coming you know coming from where I come from in North Carolina, then moving away and being gone for so long and living a completely different life. Um, and then coming back, like I just saw how some people were living right. and their living conditions and, you, you know, living conditions and the way they lived and where they live. You know, I would just be like, I kind of felt out of place, you know what right. I mean? Even though, even though I come from that, I was around, I was in that with them back you know, when I lived there, but being away from it and then coming back to it, I'm like, oh man, you guys still like nothing against it. And it wasn't even necessarily them. It was kind of just the people I knew and people around them, how they were living, you know, and it was right. just like, it's poverty. You know what I mean? It's, it's just really poverty and, and low income housing, you know, things like that in the ghetto, man. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, I just, I really felt I really felt out of place. And like you said, when people like, you know, like, man, you guys don't order groceries, you guys, you know, and it was just things that they were doing and things that they were things that they were doing on a daily basis, just the way they Mm -hmm. lived. It was just nothing was, it was nothing bad about it. It was just different, you know? And I just was like, man, I like, it would be very hard for me to have to convert to that. If I was, you know, if I was, to have to come back and I definitely wouldn't choose to live that way. You know what I mean? But, um, I mean, hell, even when I was in North Carolina, I still left, you know, the ghetto and moved to Charlotte, you know, with Sean at the time. And, um, we had a beautiful place and I would bring my brother up. I would actually go pick up my brother because I knew my brother was still in the ghetto. He was still in the hood, you know, and I would bring him up to Charlotte, you know, and, 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 you know, just to let him see something different. He loved it. He loved it. So, um, but yeah, man, it's definitely, I definitely understand what you mean, like getting that anxiety and how it's just different going back home to visit. And it's like, man, I, I'm just, I, nothing against the people I grew up with, but a lot of them I've seen, I'm like, man, they are still doing same the same thing. stuff that we were doing when we were 16, 17. You know what I mean? Like they're still, they're even dressed. They're still dressed the same way. They're still doing it. And um, that's just like, that's just life, man. That's just how, that's just yeah. how, you know, that's just how it is for them. But it's, it's, it's crazy, man. But I'm, I'm thankful for it though. I'm thankful I went through it with them most definitely. But well, it changes you, right? Like it, there's a, a, a grit, a toughness uh, to you that allows you to, to not, not only survive, but to thrive, to, to take that next step, to, to be willing to, oh, okay, yep, I've, I've got enough right here, but if it's, it's available, I'm going to chase it. I'm going to hunt it. It's, it's for me to have too. Like that, that's the, the approach that I have. Like, yep, I, we, we live a great life it's incredible the kids are happy high fives everybody gets donuts everything's awesome right. <laughs> but the other side of that is i'm always chasing what's next what's the next challenge what is the next thing that 
uh, nobody else is doing or I'm doing or, or that I can do better or how can I get better and, and yeah. provide more, or be, be more of a light or be, in some cases, more of the darkness. <laughs> the, uh, right. Because it, it, it is that man. And, and it's, it's, it's a tough deal. Uh, I want to, I want to round this out. Uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, and, and I know we, we, we have a, the brothers in the chat or whatever, like we, uh, we get, we get called asshole and asshole light. So what, <laughs> what, what is the, as a, as a man of color, like you, do you, do you find it challenging or is it, you you just know like especially coming from your background or what have you like it's it's not that big a deal or is it when when you get pulled over or in social the social uh justice scenarios that we have in in our culture currently uh and have don't don't let me make it seem like it just happened uh and have had uh do you feel like some of those things are getting better or it's it's like the quiet before the storm oh man well for me personally um, I, I really didn't go through, I guess the, the profiling that much. And I, right. it could be the color of my skin, you know, obviously maybe that's what it is. Um, I didn't go through much profiling if I was alone, but if I was with my friends who were darker complexion than me, mm. um, when we were younger, we would oftentimes get pulled over by, by the police and um, randomly. It would be for no reason at all. Uh, or if they just see a bunch of us and they would, I'm sure they would have a reason, but we weren't doing anything to cause them, to right. cause us to get pulled over. So, um, you know, that would happen from time to time. And, um, you know, we would just, you know, do what they ask, you know, whatever they want to see whatever they want to do. And then, you know, it's over with, um, they want to search the car. They want to search us, you know, and, and at that time it was just normal. We thought that that's what the police do. They pull you over and find out, you know, search you and see what you got in the car, see if you have any warrants or if you have a record or anything like that. And then if you good, they let you go. It was a normal thing. So, um, but as I got older, I've honestly haven't, I've, I'm, haven't had any run-ins with police to where I was like profiled or anything like that. I did get pulled over one time because I was speeding and I was actually going to pick up my daughter. My daughter wasn't feeling well. Her mom said, hey, you know, I'm on the way to work. You know, our baby's not feeling that good. I need you to come and pick her up, stay home with her. Done. I called my job and say, hey, I'm not coming in today. And I left out of my house, no shoes on, no wallet, uh, no socks, nothing. All I had was a pair of shorts on and a tank top. That's it. And I left, got in the car, drove straight there. Now the, the street going down to pick up my daughters, I think it's like 25. Uh, when you get on the, in the residential neighborhood, you know, it's like 25. I was going like 65 down that street, trying to hurry up and get there. And uh, I was pulled over by a police officer. And um, as soon as he walked up, you know, he's like, you know, where I stopped. I was like, I surely do. I was speeding. I was going mighty fast, you know, and I do realize the speed limit is 25. And I explained to him what was going on and where I was going. You know, I let him see. I didn't have, he asked me for my driver's license. I didn't have it. I left my wallet at home. Um, that, that was by accident. I didn't purposely leave it at home, but I actually just uh, left it sitting on the counter. But the point is that cop, um, he understood. He he actually just, you know, I, I apologized and I told him the truth, you know, and I let him know exactly what was going on. Dude, he let me go. He let me go. He just told me to have, he told me to slow down and have a good day. And I couldn't believe it. And I think, I think maybe just the respect that I have for him and then, you know, he was just doing his job. He wasn't trying to right. be mean or nasty or anything like that. And, um, you know, and I told him it was my fault. I was, completely wrong for coming through speeding like that you know and um he honestly just let me go and i couldn't believe it i couldn't well, that, believe it and and that brings me like uh and and all i and i have family members that are in law enforcement i i always ask because i'm curious like my regular uh interaction with police is always above board but i feel like 90 percent of that is what i bring to it anyway 
like right. there's there's always a, a level of respect I, w- I was in the army like there's a there's a level of respect that i show that i have a level of of, of ex, ex i expect to receive in return Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think a lot of that has to do with the way you approach the situation. Now, obviously everybody getting everybody. So I always like to, to make sure that I ask because it, it isn't represented, right? Like you, you see the, the, the killings of the un- unarmed black people and, and people of color and, and women and all these kinds of things like in right. the news, but the, what they, and, and then what, what aggravates me on the other side of that is the, then you see five videos from the same source uh with with a cop pulling over and playing basketball with two uh hispanic kids or 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 some something random that had nothing to do with the other thing but they want to make sure that you feel comfortable with both of those things happening which right. is, which is all it always rubs me the wrong way but i i love i love having having conversations especially ex- like i said experiences i don't have run-ins regularly with any t- i don't i just i live in the suburbs i don't i'm yeah. not out late i don't do things uh right all the all you know like I, I don't put myself in scenarios that require those things so they, it kind of takes care of itself in that regard too you know what's funny is um i actually had a, a similar situation happen when i lived in north carolina this was actually before i think you had left i think you had left to go to raleigh at that point so it was me and sean there uh or you may have been there i'm not sure but it was the kind of a similar situation what happened when I got pulled over going to go pick up my daughter Sean let me I didn't have I had to work later on that day he had to work in the morning so I took him to work kept the car drove back home and then would drive in to work later I didn't have a driver's license at that time and it was the same thing I remember I didn't have shoes on and I didn't have it at that time I just actually did not have a driver's license but um, which I would uh, advise no one to drive without a driver's license. <laughs> uh, yeah, you run your own risk because they're probably going to take you take you down to the hooskow for that one. So I, I made a decision to 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 drive the car without a driver's license and uh, to go pick, you know, drop off my buddy at work. And then I was going to come in later. Now, on the way back home, I dropped him off. Now, this is about a 30, 35 minute drive. Mm-hmm. on the way back home in North Carolina. I don't know if people are familiar with this, but I don't know if they still do it today, but they like to have these random license checks off the uh, off the highway when you're getting off the interstate, off the ramp. Uh, I feel just... like we, we helped them put those in place earlier. <laughs> but... So they would have these random checks, you know, just making sure you're good, making sure you got a driver's license and things like that. And uh, I, I, I was like, I'm screwed. So I'm waiting in line as, as I'm driving up. I'm like, I'm just waiting for my, my fate here. I was like, I'm just waiting to go to jail pretty much. I was like, they're going to throw the book at me, you know? So, um, I got to the, it was me next. I pulled up. This was a state trooper guy. Very intimidating. Had the little uh, oh, the state trooper hat. hat. The, yeah. yeah, the oh, sharp yeah. Hat they, ooh, with the shout little, out, shout out to state yeah. troopers. They get, they Absolutely. get it. Absolutely. They are buttoned Man. up. So this guy was uh, very intimidating. I pulled up and I said, um, he was like, let me see your driver's license, registration and proof of insurance, all that. I, I can provide two of those things for you. <laughs> that third one's going to be a problem. <laughs> so uh, he's like, what do you mean? I was like, I, I don't have a driver's license. And he's like, you don't have a license. I was like, no, I was like, I'm going to tell you what happened. So what had happened was... <laughs> What had happened was, but no, I just explained to him. I told him the exact truth, man. I was like, if you look and see, I don't have any shoes on. I know exactly who this car belongs to. It belongs to this person. Uh Uh-oh. We got you. We got you. Thought I lost you. So I was like, uh, uh, the car belongs to this person here. Uh, I was just taking him to work. Um, He's going to find a way to come back to the house and pick me up. You know, that's the story I told him just to keep trouble down and um the cop just looked at me and he was like where do you live and i told him where i live which was right around the corner it's like right off the the highway and um he looked at me dead in my face he said the state of north carolina says that i cannot watch you drive away 
from this spot with no driver's license. So what I'm going to do is turn my back. And I was like, excuse me? And he said, have a good day. And he literally turned his back and looked the other direction and started waving cars and telling the next person to come up. I hit the gas so fast, dude. I was just like, <laughs> bro, I hit that gas. I was like back in the seat. I was just like, oh my God. My heart was racing. My heart was like in my throat, dude. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. But he let me go, man. He let me go. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I mean, he could have easily... They could have towed the car. I would have went to jail or whatever. Oh, I don't bottom, know. bottom of the ocean with it. Yeah. So, um, but man, I just think that when I, you know, looking back at that, I think I just, I respected his position. Um, I answered all of his questions. I provided all of the document uh, documentation that I could. And I told right. him the truth. I told him the truth. You know, I, th I think that has, a. I mean, don't let me tell somebody else's story, right? Like, I don't know what happens in the other spaces, but for me, with the exception of one time when I was 17, 18 years old, with, and Ray, Ray alluded to it in, in our conversation, the my interaction with law enforcement or, or people in authority or whatever has always been what I brought to it, which has right. always been what I was taught to bring to it, which, right. hey, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, we do the thing. If, if I've done something wrong, I get it here we go right but the, right there, there's never been any any level like completely out of bounds like what like what's happening right. here so you know i'm with you and and like i said i i there obviously there's a lot of trainings and everything else that could be done to to kind of mitigate some of the things that we're kind of going through uh overall in our society but for the most part like anything else if if you bring something good to a situation it's really, really difficult for it to get completely out of bounds uh, in a lot of ways. And sometimes right. it, it just, unfortunately, it's it's not a one-way street. So just because you did the right thing doesn't mean somebody else is going to do the right thing. But right. Uh, right. I, I would always recommend to operate on the on on that side of it and and try to make sure you're bringing the right thing to the situation. And, and a fire doesn't need more gas to ignite. Man, I I just like everything that's going on now, you know, that's been going on. It's just being documented more now and recorded. And, you know, so I, I can't even begin to have an answer to any of this craziness, man. I don't think anybody has the exact answer. Otherwise the shit wouldn't be going on. But right. um, I just know that like, I don't have an answer. I can't speak for any of the things that's happened in the past with police brutality and anything like that because I wasn't there I wasn't a part of it so I'm not going to pretend that I know how either I would have solved the issue or I would have done this right. different you know what I mean and, and, and just, a, just a disclaimer like we're, we're not the end all be all on on these topics anyway this is right. just us going back and forth in our regular conversation uh, right. we are not legislators we are not uh, lawmakers we we are I'm not even a cop so you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you no. know, there, there's no pro anybody. There's no whatever. I always want to, I ask the question so I can get a better understanding. So I understand for me, not so I can right. pass on the information to somebody else. Like, I, right. I just like to understand for me, is there a difference? Is it just these, uh, as they say, the bad, you know, bad apples, whatever the case right. may be. I, I like have, having these conversations because it gives me an opportunity to enlighten myself on the human condition uh, and find out kind of what, what, if, if any thing there is that can be done. And I'll tell you what, I know, I know one thing that will be done is me. I'm going to take responsibility for myself. Like I've always been doing. So if I do come in contact with a police officer who may not be the perfect cop, you know, um, he may not be looked at as a favorite uh, or he may not be looked at as a good guy. You know, right. I'm going to do my best to treat that man because I look at I look at him as a human being first. You know, I, I, I look past the suit and the badge and the gun. I look at him as a human being, as a person on this planet, just like me. And I'm just going to I'm going to treat him with respect. Right. Up front. You know, there's no shadiness. There's no back talk. There's no smart mouthing. There's no attitude. I'm going to have, you know, as much respect 
from you know because i i know they have respect for us too until it things get crazy you know so and right. doesn't need to come to that but i'm gonna do my part that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do my part and um just show respect if i do have to if i do happen to come into contact with law enforcement you know just show respect and keep everything simple and plain and you know if they ask me to see something hey there you go take a look do what you got to do and let's go on through the day and let's have yes, a sir. better day you know so um that's all that's 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 how i'll contribute to you know if it, if it if it helps with the problem you know maybe maybe my you know me having a positive attitude and 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 showing a level of, of respect to this gentleman will make him have a better day maybe he's having a bad day maybe he's had a bad week a bad month you know but if i can show him like hey it's not like that with me you know what i mean i'm i'm not against you i respect yep. what you out here doing so you know maybe you know hopefully he'll have a better day tomorrow you know and he doesn't have to be he or she doesn't have to be so tense when they step to the next person of color you know what i mean right right so or 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 not of color or of any color you know so um yeah i'm just going to try to do my part man and just um stay positive stay focused and um stay out of the way that that <laughs> stay out of the way like, what well, you don't even want to talk to me I, was, I need to get you out from in front of me as quickly as possible how can right. i help you do that how can, right. I, how can I help exactly. you not be in front of me right now? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How can I help you uh, head the direction where something more serious is probably happening? Because it ain't over here. I'm telling it you. Ain't right over here. It ain't with me. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't mm -mm. with me. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, mm -mm. Um, but yeah, man, I just, uh, I respect what the cops out here doing, man. I, I, I don't think that, I mean, if I, I guess if I had to, I would. Right. But um, they got a tough job, man. It's crazy, oh, and it's it's absolutely thankless. Uh, shout out to all all peacekeepers in any way, shape, or absolutely. form. Absolutely, I would be one of the worst ones. I've my wife and I uh, talk about it, or we talked about it quite a while ago, actually, before all this stuff or whatever. <laughs> But I would be the worst policeman in the history of police because I've got to get home to read my bedtime story. So I'm going to yeah. get home. So you're like Exactly. Like, you make your choice, but I'm going to get to the house. So exactly. exactly. And, I, and I always treat them like that, right? Like that, the level of respect. Like I know uh, it's different being in, for, in the military. It's different because you get deployed somewhere and you know the good guys all have on the camouflage. So it's real easy to point out who's, right. who's good and who's not or whatever. When you're right. uh, a, a police officer, all the guy, all the good guys and the bad guys are dressed the same. So right. what, do you, what do you do with that? Like, how can you protect yourself against that? So right. I, I, I definitely have a, a, a level of, of empathy uh, for, for, for all that stuff. That's, that's a tough deal. Right, man. And I just, I mean, I see, I can't call it, man. It's just like, some people you know they're like oh that guy was you know look what he was doing he should have got shot you know what i mean or he he, he was looking right. to get shot you know what i mean i'm just like i don't think i don't think anybody wakes up in the morning like you know what i think it's a good day to get shot right like I, I, you know I what i mean that's what i ought to do <laughs> shit i mean yeah I, right I, I went to the gym yesterday i might as well get shot <laughs> shit, I might as well get shot to... today you might know as well and in no way are we laughing about people getting no, shot. Already, no, no, not at all. But just trying to bring some levity to to what what seems like it would just be common sense. Right. Exactly. So I I just yeah, man, it's it, it's crazy, man. But like I said, I'm just going to do my part, man, and um, stay out the way, man. I'm gonna stay out of the way, and 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 you know, I'm I'm just let them know I'm not I'm not a threat. Mm -mm. I'm not mm -mm. A, I'm not an issue. Nope. Uh I'm just getting through the day. I'm on I'm I'm on the way to work or coming home from work. That's it. That's why I'm out. That's it. <laughs> let me uh let, I'm I'm gonna wrap this up with you. I want to talk about and, and we talked the other day. Uh you, you later on in the conversation, uh, my wife kind of chimed in, but I was serious. Uh I I would fight a bear. <laughs> I I want to I will say I'll put that on wax cuz I I would. I would. Look Look at me. I would. I would fight a bear. Like if a bear oh was right in I, I, I told a really, really close friend of mine the same thing. He, he just busted out laughing too. He's like, 
I believe you, but that doesn't mean that's the thing you should do. But I, if, if, if one of my kids, you know what I'm saying? One of my kids or something, he was outside and, and it was a thing. Yeah, no, I'm going out there. Y'all stay here. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Much to my wife's chagrin, shout out to my queen. But she, she straight up told, she told you too. She's like, yeah, why would, I mean, I know you will, but why don't like, let's, <laughs> let's flee. Let's go. It's this whole thing. Oh man trying to fix this so man <laughs> it, and it makes complete sense like talk me off the ledge but it, it makes complete sense to me for if if it's if it's on if, two legs Jay, four legs let's go i told you man i told you to listen to your wife man i told you to listen to your wife man i i she made some valid points on why you should never <laughs> try to fight a bear now i understand if you guys are camping you guys are camping somewhere. You out chilling. Right. Bear comes up swinging, you know, throwing his he, weight around he like he wants me. to do something. He picked me. You know. Let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I get it. I get it. I'm but whooping like, Yogi's ass. I'm whooping Yogi's <laughs> ass out there. <laughs> I pictured you like GoPro on, like with the black paint. Oh your yeah! Eyes, oh, most, like, yeah, we gonna be geared. I'm gonna be geared up. I'm I'm gonna be suited and booted for the like, job. I picture you like hunting a bear, like, like you know, you block on him and like if, just just like let, you let like, a bear come over him. here. Yeah, if he came over here and did me wrong, yeah, he better go call somebody because it's on. <laughs> him and his little bear friends. I'm gonna have a bear skin rug. I'm gonna have a bear hat. I'm gonna have all types of bear outfits. I, I was telling some. <laughs> I actually was telling some friends at work about this. I was like, I got a, I got a, I got a brother who who thinks that he could take a bear, and they didn't understand it. You know, they're like, oh, he he could take down a bear, and I'm like, no, I'm like, you don't understand. He's dead ass serious. Like he thinks that if it came to it, and him and a bear, I like my chances. (laughs) I like my chances. Even my wife, my wife loves me. She's she's that's my person. That's my person. She was like, well, what, what kind of weapons do you have? I was like, I don't know. We're outside. I'm not planning them beforehand. I'm not setting stuff up. Maybe I have some rocks. Maybe I can throw a pine cone in his eye socket. I don't know. But if he picks me, oh it's on. Good. I think you should. I picture you like having like some Home Alone setups, man, like some booby traps. I think you should at least do that. I think he should be injured before you try to fight him. No, I, no, I, I, I want not... him at his best. I want I want the best version. <laughs> I want the best version of this bear. If it's gonna be something out of because because all that's all people will say too. Well, once I whip him, what is this all people gonna say? Well, the bear, you know, that bear uh two weeks ago, he was messing with some honeycombs and messed his nose up, so he really yep. couldn't defend himself properly. No, I want none of that. I want all he, of it. He he had his leg in a bear trap. Right, so, like I, mm-mm, mm-mm, yeah, mm-mm. I'll put a bear to sleep. Put a bear to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I swear I pictured you like hunting the bear, like making a reality show out of it. Like I do it, I do it. <laughs> but it, not and and for Peta and everybody else. Like I'm not saying I'm going out looking for bears to mistreat or animals or whatnot. Right, I'm right. saying specific situations where my family is in jeopardy or whatever. Like my yeah. first go to. Even coming up when we were wild and crazy and whatever, like I never had a weapon. I was the weapon. So I'm right. good with that. Let's do it. <laughs> right. Right. And I, I'm a I'm a um, I'm a witness to uh, I remember someone actually um, threatened. Uh, I, I believe someone may have tried to threaten your life. Yes. Uh, yes. They, yes. They uh, I was I was I was around at that point And uh, he said, well. He said, well, I got something in the car, you know, that'll that'll take you out. That'll take you off this, you know, take you out of here. And Jay's response was, well, let's go get it. I'll help you look for it. I'll help you look because you're going to need it. Not only it. did Jay tell him that Jay went outside and helped him look for his gun in the car. Yes. I, I yes. believe the gentleman, I believe the gentleman said he had a gun in the car in his trunk. Yep. Jay helped them pop the trunk. They were moving boxes and, uh, tire, you know, spare tires. And, you know, <laughs> Jay helped them look for it. Yep. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. Now, if somebody is trying to be in, in, back where I'm from, you know, everybody's like to do gangster shit. That was some gangster ass shit right there. Let me tell you. 
and and for you young people and everybody else for that matter and my old self like i i was again this was the peak of of my out of controlness i would say but i the one thing that that i never tolerated and that's somebody trying to put me in my place and, mm. and that was that's always been a point of pride for me now obviously what i did was stupid and i do not advise it to anyone right uh because that right. definitely could have gone a completely different way and i very right. much understand right. that but having right. having that an, another human being trying to threaten me or make me feel afraid that ain't you got the wrong duck goose <laughs> you got the right. wrong duck for that uh right. so yeah that yeah I, I do not advise it nor i would probably never do it uh, that way to this day, I'm a, like I said, this was before I was a husband and a father and things mattered to me uh, right. more than myself. But the uh, yeah, I, I, I am opposed to anybody trying to bully somebody else and make them feel less than or whatever, because, oh, well, I'll just go do this to you. OK, well, well, let's go do it. Wait, what? <laughs> that just Which, throws people off. They're like, what do you mean? You, yeah, let's go get it done. Let's yeah, go. Let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you look. I'll help you look. I don't I don't want you to be out there all day. I'll help you look. Let's right. Go. Yeah. I'm trying to make it easy. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to make it easy for you. Yeah. That, that shit was insane, dude. I couldn't believe that shit. And I knew then I was like, that this is this is my this is my man right here. That's my man right there. <laughs> The, and and, um, and and a, a bit of a, a little bit of I want to touch on that because I, I feel like I don't want to mic drop that one. The um one of the, the things that even coming up, the last thing that was that I was afraid of, especially not having kids at that point and not, you know what I mean? Like coming out of the military and graduating from all these other things that I'd accomplished. Like I wasn't even supposed to do that. So right. death has never been something I've been afraid of because it happens to everybody. The, the thing that I've, I've always actually been afraid of is being afraid. That's always yeah. been the thing that I was most afraid of is being afraid. So yeah. Uh, it, yes, very stupid, very cavalier. Uh, I've lived the, <laughs> the, the great part of my life that way, but uh, that that is the thing, even starting this podcast, and, and you and I have talked at length about it, the, the thing that I'm afraid of most for me is being afraid, and I refuse yeah. to be afraid of another human being doing anything, anytime, anywhere, or bears for that matter. Matter of fact, the bear can get it anytime <laughs> just use your bear line whatever it is hit me up we can go take care of it <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to take up any more of your time oh brother I, I i've had you on here a long time i appreciate you like for real for real like you already know but you you my dude for real absolutely man likewise man i'm 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 just happy to be a part of it man i'm happy to be a part of your life your family and I love what you're doing, man. And uh, I support it, man. And I love you, brother. Absolutely. Love you too, dude. This has been another episode of From the Root to the Fruit. I've been Jay Smith. That's Jarvis Barnett. You guys Absolutely. take care of each other and be good. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Peace.